Hi guys, it's Roy from Bellalost 3D here again with another Blender video. And the subject of today's video is roofs, those things that sit on houses and keep us dry, mostly. And how we can add a little bit of extra detail and realism to our roofs. So without much further to do, let's get on with modelling. Okay, so here we are in Blender, and as you can see, we have a roof on the screen there, much like the roof that I created on the house in the previous video. And what we're going to do is we're going to give it a little bit more feature and a little more character. Um, as you can see, it's very straight edged, very sharp, very, very linear and very neat. And a real roof wouldn't be so straight and sharp and neat. So what we need to do is we need to give this a little bit more shape. So first things first, I'm going to switch into material preview rather than in um, render view, just to save on resources for a moment. I'm gonna press my N key and I'm gonna turn on my screencast keys. And as you can see, my keys that I press will appear down here in the bottom right hand corner. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to do some preparation to the model. I'm going to split off some of the pieces that aren't going to be changed during this, this modeling. So let's select the model and press tab to go into edit mode. Press two to make sure we're on edge select. And I'm going to hover over the pieces I don't need and press L to separate, uh, to select the whole selection. And it's going to be all of these beams like these. These aren't going to change. They're going to stay exactly the same as they are all the way through. I'm going to press P and selection. And what that does is if we go back into object mode, we now have two separate pieces. We've got the pieces that are going to remain static as they are. I'm going to hide them. And then we've got the rest of the roof. And next I'm going to go into the rest of the roof and I'm going to split off this beam here make sure i'm in edge select and select the whole of the beam and separate that and the reason for this is this main piece i'm going to actually cut into quarters i'm going to just work on a quarter of it and then mirror all the rest um, but the beam i'm only going to cut in half and mirror that so let's go into the beam and with x-ray mode enabled alt z i'm going to select half of the beam and delete it so I'm in front view now. I've only got half the beam. I'm going to add a modifier mirror on the x-axis with clipping. And that gives us the whole beam. Let's go back out of that. And I'm going to go into the rest of the roof. And I'm going to just delete the areas that I don't need. So I'm going to delete the whole of the right-hand side. And bring it round to the side view. And shift select the rear of the roof. Like so. And I'm going to press X and F. And that will leave just this quarter here. What I also want to do is put a loop up the middle like so. And you can see that's not quite... Oh, it is centered because the beam's there, isn't it? And I'm going to select this face, X and F, and remove that. So I've now only got quarter of the, um, the roof to work with. And if I had a mirror modifier, X and Y and clipping, and there we go, we have the whole piece back as it was before but now we only have to work on one tiny little piece of it instead of the whole thing now you might look at it and you think well if you're mirroring the roof you're going to have the texture tiling obviously and yes that is the case and in most cases i would avoid doing that but in this case with a roof it's going to be your viewing angle is going to be like this you're not going to see as much of that um, tiling as you would normally so it's not too bad plus with the front and the rear you never can see the front and the rear at the same time so it's not going to be obvious and you only really see obvious tiling when it's side by side but if you're looking at the front and the rear it doesn't matter if they're exactly the same because they're not side by side so they won't look obviously identical so I think I'm happy to mirror this specific piece. Let's go back into object mode and we're going to select both pieces and go into edit mode because I'm going to add some geometry to this. And I'm going to add a single loop up the middle and a single loop on the beam. 
so that they're roughly the sort of same location. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to do the same along here. I'll scroll up for two loop loops across the roof. And again, I'm going to do two loops across the beam. And with this triangle piece, two loops horizontally across there. So that they all sort of line up roughly. They don't have to be spot on. It's just a little bit of adjustment. And there we have our geometry. Let's turn off X-ray mode for now. In fact, we need that on. I'm going to press Control 3 to go into left orthographic, and I'm going to select all of these pieces just here. And you could be in vertex mode by pressing 1, and that might actually be better for this. What I'm going to do is I'm just literally just going to move these pieces in so they curve slightly. And it gives it a curve to the roof, which looks much, much better. And then from front orthographic view, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to select these top pieces, the beam and the top of the roof there. And I'm going to press G and Z, move that down just a tiny bit. And then again, just select these central pieces, G, Z, move it down just a bit. Just to give it a bit of a curve. We want a more organic shape. We don't want it all straight edges and sharp, sharp edges. And as you can see, that's made a huge difference already. So let's do some more defining. And I think this bottom edge down here could do with a bit of defining. So let's select these two pieces like so. And I'm going to switch to my transform orientation to normal. Oh, it's actually already on normal. Um, fortunately, it hasn't affected anything. I'm going to turn to my move tool. And that gives me my gizmo here for moving. And notice the arrows are actually pointing in the directions that the normals point rather than the global direction which these red and uh, green lines depict. And it just makes it easier for me to just move that down like so. And it's just a tiny little adjustment, and it just changes that edge so it's not perfectly strange. And just a tiny little adjustment like that makes, makes a huge difference. And if we go back in, let's go into front orthographic mo mode. Am I in... Oh, uh, X-ray. No, I'm not in X-ray. I'm going to turn this back to global and I'm going to go into X-ray with Alt-Z. And what I need to do is go back out. I need to select both pieces again. I want to select the end of this piece and just move it out to about here. And I'm just going to scale it up just a tiny bit. And again, that just gives it a bit more of an organic shape. It makes it fatter at one end, um, fatter at each end gives it a little bit more character so now let's select all of the end piece there and let's just select the edge of the roof down to here not selecting the bottom of the roof and we're just going to move it out just a touch and then we're going to back, go back to the selection and select this piece here and not these two pieces and just bring them out a little bit further forward than the one before and then do the same at the top just a little bit further and that gives it a curve along the edge and if I come out of x-ray mode and back into um, object mode you can see that just gives that a little bit of a curve it, it's not so straight and, and horrible now I just need to sort out these um, UVs so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the model I'm going to press 3 to go into face mode I'm going to select the inside of the roof as you can see just select the inside go to uv editing press u and unwrap and let's press control and space while hovering over this window to enlarge it and select everything and we may need to rotate this minus 90 and i'm just going to select this end piece like so i'm just going to press sx and zero just to straighten that up helps me line it up with the textures i'm going to bring it in scale it right down and bring it into the middle of here and scale it back up a little bit just so it's covering as much as that as possible now what i want to do is i want to get this line here g and x and i'm going to put it right in the middle of one of these black lines and the reason for this is where it joins up in the center there as you can see because i've got it on that black line you cannot see where it joins now if i was to put this g x into the middle of there you'll see we've got a bigger plank in the middle and a bit of mirroring on the on the texture there so we just take that back to there and that's perfectly lined up 
and that's the inside done now what i want to do is same on this piece i want to select this piece the outer side of it and you unwrap let's zoom in on that r minus 90 and bring that into our texture and i just want to bring that down and i want to try to bring this so that the leading edge or the bottom edge is has as many tiles on it as possible i i, I don't want a lot of the gaps that um are on this and i think that might be about right whoops a bit too far there yeah i think that would be about right okay so that now has our texture back in place and that looks about right so what i want to do now if you can if you look at this you see that the plank part is joined directly to the tiles it just looks like the surface of the uh, the planks are, are painted with tiles we don't want that we don't want it to look like they are tiles on top of the planks so what we do is with the tile selected we press p and separate by selection and then go back out select just the tiles and now what i can do is select everything press s and just scale it up just a little bit and then a little bit more on the x-axis bring it out to about there i think i think maybe let's go back on that and press s again and bring it out a little bit further I think that'd be about right, like so. Yep, that looks about right to me. So now what I want to do is in front view, with everything unselected, I want to put another edge loop in here. And I bring it into about here. And then a final edge loop in here and bring it down to about there. And the reason for this is to help with n-gons now everybody knows about n-gons and everybody know, knows the old saying about not using n-gons it should all be quads and, and triangles that's absolute rubbish it dates back to the first iterations of rendering engines and 3d geometry based modeling um, when the rendering engines couldn't handle n-gons very well and the shading was terrible with them so you had to have quads or triangles nowadays rendering engines are a lot more forgiving and they tend to triangulate the meshes automatically before rendering so it doesn't really matter that much um, unless it's on a non-planar surface um, which is a surface that's not perfectly flat so we don't need to worry too much about n-gons the only time we really need to worry about n-gons and the reason that i've put these borders in is when you have lots of very long thin n-gons that can cause a little bit warping in the shading so the reason i put these borders in is so that these can be these central pieces that are here uh, these pieces here when they're triangulated they'll just have a single tri triangle uh, a single um edge loop through from corner to corner and there'll be big triangles so you won't get lots of tiny um lots of very long thin triangles and then these edges will be triangulated individually and they'll be shorter not so thin triangles um that's why i've done this edge here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the knife tool to cut around these tiles to define the edges and give it a bit more shape and what i'll do is I'll, I'll go through a few little pieces with you and show you and then I'll put it into time lapse because you don't want to sit sit here watching 10, 15 minutes of me pointing, selecting and clicking and creating edge loops with a knife tool. It's 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 actually a long laborious task, but it's worth doing. Um, it, it's a little bit of extra work, but it really, really does make a difference to how your model looks. So let's start. Um, we press K and we choose... Oh, Let's start by pressing K and we choose an area to work on. Let's click on here and create an edge loop in this corner. Press enter, go into face mode with three, select that face, X and F. 
and as you can see it's created an edge there and I'm going to go across the bottom so what do we have here we have um, and what I'm going to do I'm actually going to press the backslash key on the numpad and that will isolate this piece of the roof so we don't have all them bits sticking through like we did and in front mode let's take a look I'm going to press K and I'm going to select this edge I'm just going to go in a little bit and then down to the edge there and press enter 3 and XF and then press K again I'm going to K again I'm going to select this piece just cut across like so enter that's 3 and XF and I think you get the idea there you just go along the edge and cut out the edges of the tiles so I'm going to time lapse this now and I will be back with you when I'm done Okay, and there we have it. Our edges are all cut out. And you can see that that makes much bigger difference to the whole thing. It makes it look more like it's been built and put together and not just modelled in a program. One last thing what I need to do with this is to add a solidify modifier on this. Um, just to give it a bit of an edge to it. Let's bring it out just a touch not too far or it will stretch the textures about there should do it and there we have our roof and all we need to do now is to apply our modifiers so let's hide that and go through and apply all our modifiers and then alt h to bring it all back select it all and control j to join it and there we have our medieval roof and i'm sure you'll agree that looks far better than the straight edged monstrosity we, we had before um so much more detail it looks a lot more organic and looks more like it's built rather than modeled so i hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you've learned something from it. If you did, please hit that like button. It really, really helps the channel. And hit the subscribe button. And press the notification icon so that you can be notified whenever I release a new video. And thank you very much for joining me. All of you are very much appreciated as viewers. I do this for you. It's not for me, it's for you. And I do appreciate every single one of you who watches. So I hope to see you all again in my next video. Thank you very much and goodbye.